ITF welterweight champion of the world came all the way over here to do what a lot of guys would not do. And there's the tangible proof and evidence. Go ahead, Errol, opening statement. Um, I'd like to thank you know the media for coming out for this uh, for this fight. I'd like to thank the fans for coming out and um, you know support me and uh, giving me the motivation. Even you know I like to thank Kel Brook fans too for giving me the motivation and um, using you know you know their booze as a positive. But I had a great camp, like I said. I told you I was coming over here to bring the title back to America, and I did that. And um, I think a lot of it's, it's only up from here now. You know, I want to fight. I want to fight um, Keith Thurman, I want to fight Manny Pacquiao, and I want to unify the titles. And, you know, my ultimate goal is, you know, become the number one what's weight in the division. Was there anything he did that surprised you, Gerald? Um, No. Uh, Kel Brook, he's a strong fighter. He's strong. He's fast. You know, he lived up to the ex expectations that, you know, me and my coach had. I knew he was going to be crafty. He's strong. He's fast. And, um, you know, he can punch and um, you know I had to show true grit and um, had to you know basically go into and go on the fire and uh, press him out. When did you know it was the beginning of the end? Um I, th um, I think nope. Um I think probably in um, eighth or ninth round he was kinda of wearing down a little bit and I started pressing the action and um, I hit him with good shots and he was standing still a little bit more. And then I saw him blink. He blinked the, uh, the eye that he hurt. So I decided to jump on him, and um, you know it started swelling up a lot more, like in the ninth and tenth round. And I just jumped on him. Did he say anything to you after the fight? Oh uh, no, he just he told me congratulations, and um, you know he said respect, and um, nothing but respect for him because he's a true champion. And uh, you know I wanted to fight, you know, the champion, the guy who holds the belt. I didn't want to fight just another ranked guy for the belt for a vacant belt. And uh, he gave me the opportunity. And I'd like to thank him for that. Did he ever hurt you when you fight at all, or beat you, or kind of buzz you at all in the fight? Uh, he hit me with some good shots, but it, it was nothing that they ever hurt me. I think you know I proved a point today. A lot of people, you know, had those questions of can can Earl Spence take a punch? And uh, I think I proved that today. I can take a punch from a big welterweight, a big strong welterweight. Earl, congratulations. Hey, Pop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we say. Oh, it was great. It was great atmosphere. Um, you know, the fans was was awesome. Um, you know, they came here to support their hometown guy, and you know that's why I figured, that's why I expected coming in that you know the fans are gonna be electrifying. We have great fans over here in the UK, and they support their guy. And that's what they did, and um, I said I was going to use that as a positive and use that as motivation, and that's what I did. I used, you know, their energy as motivation and um, trying to silence the crowd. What's, what's for you next now? Uh, for me next is, you know, vacation, you know, chilling on the beach somewhere. But you know, hopefully I can get back in the ring. Um, Keith Thurman's out for a while, so you know, maybe I can fight at home in Dallas at the American Airlines Center. And then you know, fight Keith Thurman later on in the year or next year. Um, I think so. Um, you know, I, I feel like me, skill wise, me and Kel Brook is the most skilled fighters at the welterweight division. You know, we're the biggest and strongest fighters at the welterweight division. I think we proved that tonight. You know, exceeding our expectations, this was a big fight, and you know, uh, we gave the fans what they wanted, we gave the public what they wanted. And um, you know, I take my hat off to him, and I think you know I am the best fighter in the welterweight division right now. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to Jamaica. Um, not right now, but later on in the year, I'm gonna go to Jamaica, relax for a bit. You know, we had a house out there, so I'm gonna chill. Uh, Lindsey Lewis want to play chess? Tell him come on. Huh? Who? Oh, well, um, um, you know, he, he was pretty confident when uh, when I talked to him in Toronto. He was pretty confident that you know he could beat me. So I think he'll face me.
Uh, definitely. That's what we always do. That's always the game plan to take the body. You know, you go on to a round, so later on, you know, you wear your opponent down when you go to the body. And I think, you know, that's what I did because, you know, he was real sharp and he started wearing down a little bit later on in the rounds. You sparred with a lot of top, top guys in terms of his power. It looked like he wasn't really hurt. Did he hurt you before that? Oh, no, he didn't hurt me at all, but, you know, he's very strong. I, I definitely felt some punches, but it was nothing that, you know, that hurt me. Both uh, you and Javonta Davis come over as Americans to the place where there's been some funny scoring here recently, and you both looked as if you felt it would be a good idea to leave it to the judges. Is that a factor in your opinion? Uh, yeah, it's always been a factor since, you know, since the amateurs. Um, you know, it's a lot of politics that go into amateurs, and uh, you know, I've been on a bad end of bad decisions. So, you know, if you if you don't have to leave it in the judges, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. And um, you know, it was a point in there where I could, I was able to, I could stop him. I seen uh, if I jumped on him, I could stop him. So, you know, I jumped on him so it wouldn't go to the store cards. Oh, my thing is, this this was a great experience. Uh, you know, especially in my young career. Uh, you know, my first title shot. You know, coming here uh, a week early. You know, do training camp, and uh, you know, basically fight for my first title in front of 30,000 screaming fans. You know, in the champion's hometown. You know, this is this was a legacy to define the fight for me. You know, I proved myself. I proved that I have composure. I have true grit. You know, I can pull it out. You know out of me when I have to. <clears throat> yeah, he's gone to hospital. <clears throat> I think it's a, the same injury as the Golovkin fight, but the other eye, uh, which is, you know, unbelievable. But, you know, it was, it was caused by Errol. So nothing, uh, as we said before, no excuses in the fight. Injuries, weight. He was beaten by the better men tonight, and that was Errol Spence. No, the, the surgeon was in the ring after. He, you know, he's very confident of the uh, the operation, but it's a big blow. It's a big blow to the career. There's a lot of pain going through the first one, and now he's got to go through another one. But that's boxing, and uh, you know, like I said, it was, it was called by Errol Spence. It was a great fight, and the better man won tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, it, again, we said before there'd be no excuses at the weight. He didn't make the weight horrifically, he just made it the same way he's made it every other time. And we were quite happy with how he made the weight. But he's 30 odd now, you know, it's, he, he deserves respect because, and I'm glad, I know Errol's glad, that he got to fight the champion in his hometown rather than fighting in Texas for a vacant belt against number two or three because, you know, he showed his grit coming over. And it was all on the line tonight, you know, Kel Brook's a big fighter for us and, uh, you know, Errol's a big fighter for, for Al Heyman and his team, so it's very important for both of us to, to get the win. And it was a big win in the career of Errol Spence. Is there anything else? All right, guys. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.